What's going on guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. When the Droid Revolution was taking place on Verizon, a lot of Sprint users were thinking, hey, I've got this super awesome Evo 4G, why don't they turn Evo into a brand name? Well, Sprint has listened to you, well, you know, at least they've either listened to you or they have good marketing people because the Evo is a brand name now with the Evo Shift 4G. It's the second Evo device and it's pretty cool. It has an 800 megahertz Snapdragon, next generation Snapdragon processor, 3.6 inch display, physical QWERTY keyboard, 5 megapixel camera, and best of all, 4G connectivity in Android 2.2. So it's a cool device, it's well equipped, and it's for that person that thinks, hey, I like the Evo, but I don't want to pay $199, don't need a big screen, etc., etc. We'll find out more about it in the review, but first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with two of these, so we can give them to you in the One Paw Bandit game. One thing I like about Best Buy Mobile, when you walk in to get this, you don't have to deal with any rebates. It's $149.99, out the door, no waiting eight to ten weeks, no messy paperwork. Go to the store, you get it right away. Enough of that, let's get into it. So the marketplace has been updated on uh, most Android devices over the past few weeks, and you can see that this one resembles the new marketplace as well. You have this carousel up the top that moves back and forth with recommended apps, and you have the new kind of visual here with uh, the same apps you remember from, from before, excuse me, but you have apps, games, and Sprint as well. So we can click on Sprint recommended apps. You can see for the most part it's the same. It's more of an aesthetic change. But let's go to American Express, for example. You can see it looks nice not only in portrait mode, you have your description, your reviews, your related, your developer info, but then when you turn it to the side, it'll pop into landscape mode. And you can see it kind of carries over that nice aesthetic image over into landscape mode. So it's a little bit of an improvement from the old Android market that's kind of blocky and uh, overall I've been pretty pleased with it. Downloads still work exactly the same and because this is Android 2.2 not only can you put your apps on your SD card but you can also I'll show you in just a second not only can you put those on your SD card but you can also set it up for automatic downloading so if you have an app that allows you to automatic update you don't need to go to the Android market and wait for the update each time it comes in you can do it from or you can set it up to where it'll automatically do it for you. So let's take a look at my apps, for example. I have uh, Quadrant Standard, so I can set it to where it says allow automatic updating. So each and every time Quadrant Standard comes out with an update, it'll auto update for me, and you'll see that little download icon in the top left-hand corner versus having to do it yourself each and every time. So it saves a little bit of time, it's nice. And you know, for those apps you trust, it's a, uh, it's a nice benefit over something like iOS, which every time you do an update, you have to type in your Apple ID and your password. So, you know, something that uh, something you may love, something you may hate, but at least you have the option to turn it on. The Evo Shift has your typical personal information management applications, calendar, contacts, obviously we showed you that, things of that nature, but let's just do a quick look of the, uh, of the calendar just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Typical, cal actually it's typical sense calendar, and you can see to add an appointment, click the add, and for the most part it's pretty self-explanatory. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the interface looked like as opposed to stock Android. You can change that up when you, uh, or you can change your appointments, do things like that from the calendar. But let's take a look at the camera. It's a five megapixel camera on this device and there is no physical camera button. So that may frustrate some people, but other people may say, you know, it's not a big deal. But for me, you know, somebody has kind of shaky hands when I'm taking a picture, it is a little bit frustrating. I found the camera to be maybe a little bit worse than the Evo 4G, not that much though. You can definitely see, I mean, I have a lot of shiny, or a lot of light shining down on this, but you can definitely see the BIC logo there on the side. And, uh, you know, overall it zooms in, the autofocus is very good. Let's see if I can get that BIC logo from this side. And I've been pleased. You know, you think of a lot of uh, high-end devices, the Samsung Galaxy S line, a lot of devices that have 5 megapixel cameras, and this definitely holds its own with it. You have your editing options here. You can select photo or video, brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, things of that nature. And then you can turn your flash on and off or you can obviously take the picture and go to your gallery. Here it is, the Mac Daddy of all speed tests. Let's do the Quadrant Standard Test. And I hate to be the snitch, but in my testing at CES last week, it was running higher than the Evo 4G. My Evo 4G typically runs between 1100 and 1250 in terms of Quadrant Standard scores. And you know, this was running a little bit higher. So kudos, assuming it stays that way, kudos to the Evo Shift 4G. That said, you know, let's talk a little bit about the call quality. I've been very impressed. I tested it in both Las Vegas and Charlotte area. And Las Vegas, as you know, CES was taking place last week. There are 100 plus thousand people uh, that are hanging out at the convention center and all around the Strip, so coverage isn't the best. And it definitely held its own with, uh, I think, two dropped calls 
which is huge. I mean, considering I had <laughs> many more than that on the uh, the competing carriers, so definitely held its own. 3G and 4G were decent, and uh, in places like the first floor in the Venetian, or places that would, you know are underground with spotty coverage at best, it's been pretty good. Speaker phone's been great. The earpiece is very loud, and uh, and overall. It's been pretty decent. I've had some data speed issues since I've been here, but we'll talk about that in a second. $1,499, so just under $1,500 in terms of a Quadrant Standard benchmark. So it does beat the Evo, proving that, at least in this unofficial test, that the 800 megahertz next generation Snapdragon processor, just because it's 800 megahertz, doesn't mean it's no slouch. It can take on that 1 gigahertz first generation Snapdragon, and in this case at least, beat it. So we'll take a look more on that in future videos. Let's take a look at speed test as well to get an idea of what we're looking at. Now this has been the interesting one for me because literally my office is right beside a cell site. I mean right beside a Sprint WiMAX 4G cell site. I can stare at it out the window and my coverage, my 4G coverage has been horrible at best but when you go you know, deep within the city of Charlotte, uptown, it does get better. I'm not sure what's going on with this cell site but I've written to Sprint and uh, we'll see what happens. But you can see I'm running 4G and I'm hovering in the uh, 600 megabits or 600 kilobits per second range. Needless to say, that's not a good thing. So, you know, for 4G speed, that's pretty terrible. That said, again, I've reached out to Sprint and I'm waiting to hear back what they say. It could be a tower issue. This tower is, you know, overloaded because it's right near the interstate, near a uh, near a large mall, near a couple of other things where there, you know, it's constantly high traffic. But still, I mean, those are those are terrible 3G or 4G speeds rather. And, uh, and not good from uh, from a carrier that touts their 4G network. Again, still ho hovering in that 600 kilobits per second range. Upload seems to be a little bit higher, 11 to 1200 kilobits per second range, but still very frustrating on that front. Let's see what it comes in at. Mm, da -da 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 -da, drum roll, 1018, 1018 kilobits per second. So, as I said, not great, but we'll certainly, I'll keep you updated on what Sprint says there. Much more coverage to come on the Evo Shift 4G. I can already see some dogfights between this, the Epic 4G, and a couple of other devices that I have in my little stockpile that I like to call an office. So be, be on the lookout for those dogfights. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Six days left if you're watching this on the, uh, let's see what today is, on the 11th. Six days left to register to win an iPad, a Galaxy Tab, or a BlackBerry Playbook on our phone dog page, facebook.com slash phone dog, like us, enter the sweepstakes, you get up to seven entries for liking our network pages, today's iPhone, Droid Dog, win free prizes, uh, and several more, Timo News, et cetera, et cetera. You find more information at facebook.com slash phone dog, be sure to check it out. It's an awesome giveaway and your chances are high. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron. Hit me up with questions about this, questions about anything that relate to phones, or who knows, you know, write me and say, why is the sky blue? I'll answer that as well. Thanks for watching. Much more coverage to come on the Evo Shift 4G on PhoneDog.com. We'll see you next time.